Hey everyone, welcome back to Salesforce Made Simple. In this video, we're gonna cover how to make a call script using a Salesforce flow. And so this is something that can come up a lot um, depending on the environment you're working in. And really what this boils down to is a screen wizard that's designed to collect information from an end user and then like do some sort of update in Salesforce. And so we're gonna go through some of the steps to make the call script in uh, today's video. But before we get started, it's important for you to be thinking about the requirements for your call script. So these are the steps you will take before going into Salesforce and building your flow. And there's kind of three questions that you're gonna wanna have answers to before you get started. Um, and they're up there on the screen. So uh, the first one would be, what pain point is this call, strip, call script trying to solve? And generally speaking, um, you know, a support rep or you know, a sales rep is gonna be using your call script. And typically they may be, you know, not getting all the information they need to complete a particular process in Salesforce, or they're, um, you know, the executives of a company are really just looking to standardize certain aspects of customer service. And so understanding that in a little bit more detail will give you a good intuition for how to build and deploy the flow. And I guess as sub points to what pain point is the call script trying to solve, it's really important that you understand who will be using the call script to collect information. Um, that's often what call scripts are doing is, you know, they're uh, asking questions of a customer, getting a response and, you know, the, the support or sales rep is entering that information into the, the call script. And then once the information is collected, how is it going to be used in Salesforce? You know, are we going to update account records? Are we updating lead records? Do we need to update certain fields so that, uh, they show up on certain reports and dashboards? And those are all really important things to know before you get started. Otherwise your solution is going to be half baked. So just keep that in mind as we go through this, that I'm going to give you the 30,000 foot overview, but you'll need to take these concepts and apply them to whatever your specific use case is. So with that said, there's four steps that we really need to take um, when building out the screen flow. And uh, the first one is to just get started building the screen flow. The second one is that we need to um, collect information in our, our screen wizard. So we need to add some input components onto the screen wizard in order to do that. And then uh, we'll likely need to update Salesforce. And uh, finally, you'll have to deploy your screen flow. So you'll want to think about where the call script needs to appear inside of Salesforce. And that's what we're going to take care of um, next. So I'm going to jump over to Salesforce. And we can just get started by uh, going up here to the top right and clicking the setup menu. And we're just going to navigate to the flow builder. Type in flows, open up the flow builder. And I'm going to click the new flow button. And as you might expect, I'm going to be making a screen flow. So we get our six flow uh, record types here. I think there might be some like pre-built ones that you could potentially use, like the, the contact request flow. Um, so, you know, feel free to look at some of these templates in the future. But for now, we'll just do a basic screen flow and uh, click next. Uh, for the purposes of the video, I'm going to switch it to the freeform layout. I like having the flow canvas in the freeform layout whenever I'm doing a tutorial or a screen recording, just because it's easier to see the elements over here on the left. So we're here in the canvas and we need to kind of drag our first element to um, the palette, I guess. And we're going to move the screen element over. When we're working with a call script, it's always going to involve a screen element somewhere. So we'll just get started by doing that. I'll just call it screen one because I don't really have a better name. Um, if you want to name it something else, feel free. And then just out of habit, I always hide the pause button. Um, I generally uh, don't give users the ability to pause the flow, but if you want them to do that, feel free to leave that on there. Um, and then I'm just going to press done and connect the screen flow start to our screen. And then I'm going to press save and I'll just call this a screen and I'll just call it like call script. And I just like to save. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> it already exists. All right. So maybe I practice this video. So here we'll do call script two, and I'll press save. And so I like to save early and often. And I do that just in case, you know, my computer crashes or something happens that I don't lose all my work. So now that we have um, our first screen on the canvas, let's double click that open again. And let's kind of talk about the different elements that we're going to put on the screen. So there's two things that you're going to want to have in a call script. 
uh, generally the first thing you'll want to have is some text for your sales or support user to read to the customer or the client that they're talking to. And so that's why it's important to understand who's going to be using uh, this call script so that you know what sorts of things they might need to say. Um, so if we look over here on the left, we see that there's an input component right below the address one called call script. And I can just drag this over and, uh, you know, it doesn't render as anything, but we can call this uh, first call script text. So we'll just label the component. And then in the script text here, we can actually type uh, what we would want the support or sales rep to say. So we could say, you know, hello, happy, today's Saturday. So I'll just say happy Saturday. And by typing in, you know, some text here to the call script, it pops up here in the actual call script component. And so you could imagine if an end user were to open up the screen wizard, they would see whatever the script text typed in here was. And so that's a really good first step. Um, I'm going to press done, and I'm actually going to take a, a second step that makes working with that script text a little bit easier. And so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the manager. We're going to press a new resource. And we're going to click the resource type and select text template. And, uh, you know, I could just call this uh, call script text. Oh, I'll probably have to not have spaces in there. Call script text. And then I'm going to change this to be view as plain text. Otherwise, you'll get like weird HTML characters in there. And what we're doing here is we are creating a variable where we can just type our text in. And then rather than typing a huge long line of text inside the actual screen, uh, we can just type it into this text editor, which is a little bit better than that one line. So you can see you can like kind of drag it open and it's a little bit easier to work with. It also has the benefit of um, you know being able to insert resources. So if you wanted to call um, or if you want to do, do a get element and look up a specific Salesforce record and then reference those fields um, in your call script, you could do that uh, more efficiently with this text resource. So we'll just keep it simple. We'll say hello. Happy Saturday. And uh, I guess we can just improvise a scenario here. So let's imagine that the person reading this call script is trying to set an appointment. Um, we probably don't have to get more specific than that. Um, we could just say, what time would you like to come in for your appointment? And so we could just imagine that um, the sales or support rep is speaking with a customer and you know, they give a friendly greeting and now the, they're gonna ask the customer when they wanna come in for an appointment. So we have this here in our little uh, call script text, we'll press done, and then we can go update our screen. So I just double clicked on the screen and by clicking our call script text here, we can change this from just typing the text into uh, the script text field to selecting that call script text template. And so by clicking that, uh, it won't load right away here but it will load if we were to uh, run the flow. So we know that uh, our sales rep is asking, you know, someone on the phone to come in for an appointment. And so I guess it would be good to have um, a date and time field here so that the sales or support rep could then enter the date and time uh, for the customer to um, come to our business, whatever our business is. Um, so I just dragged a date and time field to the screen and we can just call this a uh, customer appointment time. And we can require this so that if um, someone's using the screen wizard, they can't uh, just fill out the screen without you know giving us the information we need. So I'm gonna press done and I will press save. And then I'm gonna press the debug button here. And what this will do is allow us to see what's been built so far with our screen. And so we can see it, you know, it says, hey, we're going to debug the flow. That looks good. So we'll press run. And you can see that our call script text template renders. So it's like, hello, happy Saturday. What time would you like to come in for your appointment? And that because we added that date time field here, there's now a required date time. And so the end user in this case, the sales or support rep, who's, I guess, me in this example, would be forced to pick, you know, the date and time of, you know, their appointment. So that all looks great. Um, let's kind of finish out this use case by adding uh, maybe one uh, more field to the screen and maybe updating our call script text. So let me go back to the call script text over here on the left. I'll click it open and I'll just add another question here. So I'll say, what is your name, comma, 
and what time would you like to come in for your appointment? And this will give us a really simple use case. So we've updated our call script text. Now I'm going to open up the screen and I'm going to actually add um, a text field here. Uh, you could potentially add the name component. So if you wanted to drag that over, uh, you could. And this actually has a first and last name pre-built already. So I think it makes sense to use that. The other component that I was thinking about using was maybe the, the um, input text, but then I'd have to drag two over. So I'm just going to use this name component. I'll just call this uh, customer name. And I think that should be should be good. You can see that we have you know fields to display here. You could potentially add a comma, and I think you could do something like middle name, and then you know a middle name field would uh, appear. I don't think we need the middle name. I'm just going to catch or uh, capture the first and last name, but you could imagine you you could really capture as much information uh, as you wanted, and that again speaks to the importance of understanding the requirements uh, before you start building your flow. So we're going to just capture the first and last name and then the date. I'm looking over here on the right to see if I can make this required. And there's not a really easy or uh, obvious way to do that. Um, so we'll just kind of have to trust our users to get that um, set up properly. So I'll press done. And then what we'll do is click on the elements over here on the left. And then I'm going to drag a create records to the canvas. And we'll just call this create lead. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the information that we captured in our screen and use it to create a lead record. And um, so we'll just say, how many records do we want to create? One, we're going to use separate resources and literal values. And the object that we want to create is the lead. And then this is where the first, last name, and appointment date are really helpful. So we'll do first name, we'll do last name, and then I actually don't know if there's a date field I can use on the lead. Let's see. I just type in the word date. No. Yeah, no, no uh, obvious date field here. Let's see. Maybe I could just put it in the description. That might work. So now that we've defined which fields um, our data should populate on the lead record, uh, we have to actually map them. And so what I'll do is I'll click the first name field, and then I'll click our customer name screen component element here from the dropdown, and then I'll just pick uh, first name. I'll repeat that process again for the last name, again, selecting the customer name screen element uh, component and selecting last name. And now that I've mapped these two, you should see customer name, which is what we called our input uh, element, and then the value of the first name field. Finally, I'm just going to type something into the description. I'm going to say the customer wants to come in on, and then actually I'm going to, so I just wrote that out in the field mapping. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, press the delete button on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click the customer appointment time here so that we have the uh, syntax here. But then I'm going to put my cursor at the very beginning of the field and just paste that text in. So now it says the customer wants to come in on, and then the uh, customer appointment time will be filled in there. So we'll press done, and then we will connect our screen to our lead, and we will press save. And so there's lots of different ways to do a call script. Uh, in this example, we're not firing it off a particular record. We're kind of just asking a question and then creating a record. And so we could deploy this in Salesforce. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, the first step to doing that, though, will be to press the Activate button. And once that's active, we're uh, good to kind of use the screen flow in different places. So let's go back to our home screen. And we see that we're in the Sales app here. And that's uh, this you know text over here in the top left. It says Sales. That's how we know what app we're in. And so I'm going to click open the Setup menu. And then I'm going to go to the app manager. I typed in app in the quick find, and then I'll select app manager. And then I'm going to find the sales app that we just saw. And I think because I'm in the lightning environment, it's called lightning sales. So we'll open this up by clicking from the little drop down on the right and pressing edit. 
And now I'm going to uh, navigate and press navigation items. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, utility items is what I wanted. And we're going to add a utility item for that screen flow that we just made. And you'll see what that looks like in a second. So I'll press add utility item. And then I can just select flow from the list here by clicking on it. And then we can call this, uh, we can give it a name. So we'll say uh, lead creation. And then you can define in pixels the width and height of your panels. I'll just leave these to the default for now. And then down here at the bottom, we have to select the flow that um, we want to use in this component. And so I made that flow called screen dash call script two. Uh, just pick whatever the name of your flow was and select it there. And um, I think that's all we have to set. So if you want to, you can change the icon. I'll just leave it to the little lightning bolt for now and we'll press save. And so now if we navigate back to our sales app and refresh the screen, uh, we should see, and we do down in the bottom left-hand corner, our new utility item for the lead creation screen. And so I can open this up and you can see that our uh, call script appears and says, hello, happy Saturday. What is your name? And what time would you like to come in for your appointment? And so again, this is kind of a, yeah, you probably wouldn't start a real conversation like this. There would be there would be more uh, give and take between the customer uh, support rep and the um, end customer. You know, you'll really want to think about the scenario that you're building the call script in to see if it matches. You know, in this scenario, we're just kind of jumping straight into asking a question, and you won't always do that. You know, you might try to build some rapport and be like, "Oh, hi, Mister So and So, um, how's your day?" And um, you'll have to work with both your executives and your uh, support users to understand uh, what they normally you know, talk to customers about in order to write the right call script. Um, but this is great because now we can just enter the first and last name. I'm thinking actually that this might throw an error because we didn't get the company field. I think the lead field, the lead record requires a company field. So let's test that real quick. So I'll just type in the name Bob for the first name, apples for the last name. And then from the customer appointment time, I can just select, you know, today. And then if I press next, our flow will attempt to create a lead. And I'm thinking it's going to fail because it doesn't have the company field, but we'll see. Yep. So what we'll do is we'll just go back to our call script and we'll open up our create lead records. And I'm just going to open up the company field. And because we're not collecting that information um, through the screen, just for the purposes of creating a lead record, I'm just going to put in um, like apples, enterprises as the company. And so that will allow us to create the lead record. But again, this speaks to the importance of understanding the requirements of your business users. So I'll press done. I'll press save as, and we'll save this as a new version. Then I'll activate it. And now if I refresh uh, the home page here, we should be able to create a lead. So again, our little call script pops up. We'll type in Bob apples, and then we will pick, um, I guess today and press next. And you can see that, you know, the screen refreshed there and our call script opened up again, and that actually created the lead record. And so, okay, I have a bunch of, <laughs> uh, Bob apples in here, but we'll open up the top one. And you can see that the company that we manually entered into the flow is available there. And then if we look in the details section, we, we have Bob apples. And then down here in the description, you can see the customer wants to come in on you know today's date. And so that's basically it. So let me drag my little Google Doc back over here and we'll kind of summarize. So some of the things we learned in the call script um, demo here was that the first step is to understand the requirements. And we're really trying to understand what the pain point the call script is trying to solve and then who's gonna be using the call script. And then once information is collected, where will that information be used in Salesforce? once we know those three things, we're well on our way to building an effective call script. Uh, and then, so what we did inside Salesforce to build everything out is we built a screen flow. Um, we built out, you know, our little text um, for the, the call script and the text template. And then we put in some input fields like the name and date so that our end users could, could collect information. In this case, we decided to create a lead so that we could update the Salesforce database with a new lead record for the information we collected. And then finally, we deployed that call script by updating the sales lightning app with a utility item to display the screen flow to end users. So hope this was helpful and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any feedback.